up with a new uh, philosophical theory, uh, the theory of the evolution of perception, and he's written a book on that particular theory. Um, Welcome, Chris. I'm so glad Hi, to Marine. have you here. Thank Thanks you for, for coming. Thanks for having me. Now, I know that you have a website. Can you tell me what that is so the audience will know? Yeah, I have a, a site called ChristopherOtte.org. Okay. And I've created it so that people can find my book. And uh, there's a link to where it can be purchased and, and where they can read the introduction if, if they'd like to, to, cons to uh, consider it. Okay, and do you have anything else out on that website as well? Uh, I, I just have some, some humor. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Humor related to? Uh, you'll see. If okay. you go to the website, you'll find it. Okay. Uh, okay. That sounds good. Um, I know that, that the evolution of uh, perception is a new paradigm or consensual theory. Mm -hmm. it, and you and I have talked about this a little mm -hmm. previous. Can you tell me what a paradigm or consensual theory is? Well, yeah. Um, a paradigm is a, uh, is a, a way that a group of people um, organize their world consensually so that they can interact and, and cooperate. Um, I didn't use the word paradigm because it's become such a cliche in literature to talk about a paradigm shift mm -hmm. and uh, a new paradigm and the last paradigm and the third paradigm. So I actually I, I created my own term, a consensual theory, which oh. is what I think uh, expresses what, what I mean by paradigm. Uh, and, um, but to explain what a paradigm is, I, I give the analogy of the game of tennis. The game of tennis has a set of rules. And if, if two people don't play by the same rules um, when they play tennis, they can't really play tennis. Mm -hmm. For instance, if uh, both people uh, have a different set of rules and think that this move is winning the game and the other thinks it's losing the game, then they're not going to be able to play. Mm -hmm. So they have to have a consensual uh, set, of, set of rules in order to interact. Okay. And science uses paradigms. It works within paradigms. And uh, if it didn't, you wouldn't have any progress at all in science mm -hmm. because everybody would be organizing everything and seeing things a different way, and uh, there would be uh, no development. People wouldn't be able to... Um, build upon the development of others. So they have to have a common language, a common set of principles, uh, axioms, certain things that are just taken for granted. Okay. Uh, what, is the, yeah. what is the present consensual theory okay. at this point in time? In philosophy, um, in America, the, the English-speaking world especially, um, the, the philosophical paradigm is called materialism. Mm -hmm. And I was going to explain that. Oh, uh, what, I'd love what to. That I would means. love an explanation. Okay, of what we that all means, say, okay, helpful. well, we all kind of know what materialism is. We go, well, that's where everything is made of matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's about as far as most people could get explaining what materialism is. But actually, if you ask those people to articulate further what they mean by that, they wouldn't be able to. Okay, and if the person was to pick something up and go, uh, well, this is matter. You know, I'm holding this, this like what I what I see, what I touch, what I feel. This blue, that's the matter. They would be incorrect. But that's called uh, uh, naive realism, mm -hmm. and th that view is is what most people think materialism is. But real academic materialism is not that view at all. It is not that this experience, this blue, this this feel. This, this hardness is the matter. Uh, so I want to explain what materialism is. Okay. So that you can understand why I move away from it and try something else. Okay. You, we've all heard the expression, what a tree falls, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, doesn't make a sound. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people laugh and they think, well that seems sort of like a, you know, a silly, trivial question. But if you think about it and you remember your physics, you'll remember that if a tree falls in the forest and it hits the ground, it creates a vibration in the air. And that vibration moves through the air, wiggles the molecules in the air, and that sends, it sends a wave to your eardrums and that wiggles your eardrums. 
and then this vibration sets up a chain reaction of events which sends a signal, an electrical signal, through the nervous system to your brain, and in your brain you create the experience of sound. In other words, you interpret the vibration as sound. So I'm going, you know, I'm going to have to do this like this because it's it's real difficult. So I'm going to. That's just that's fine. I okay. think that's a great way to do it for both for the audience and for for me. So right. that's great. Okay. Now let's so sound as you experience it isn't out there in the world anywhere. There is no sound out there in the world as it is in itself. At least this is the the our current theory. It, rather, there's a vibration. But this vibration has no sound, and this vibration can only be described in mathematical terms. For instance, I could tell you the cycle of, of uh, cycles per second of the vibration. I could give you a number mm -hmm. for it, but I wouldn't be able to just describe it in some way that you could imagine. I can merely write the equation for the sound. Okay, as the sound is outside of my head. Okay, now let's take light, and you see that the same thing happens. Normally we say, well, I see the light, or I see light spilling over, you know, on this table. Well, actually, you don't see light, okay? It, it's kind of like a, a misunderstanding. All that you see is color. All visual perception is the experience of color. I see some white, I see some uh, brown, I see some, I see some blue, this is blue. These are all colors. And it basically, you know, like if you took a photograph and you broke it into pixels, you would see that every single pixel could be assigned a color. Mm -hmm. And that's what you perceive. Light does the same, a similar thing to the sound. Light, as the theory goes, is some kind of energy, okay? It's more complicated than that, but anyway, we can describe light itself in mathematical terms. Again, it's a vibration or a frequency. We can describe the frequency of something, okay? And we can write that down mathematically. Well, anyway, this light that we're describing mathematically, but we've never seen, stimulates your eyes, okay? Uh, the, the cells in your eyes, and then that stimulation is converted to an electrical signal which goes down the optic nerve to your brain and then is interpreted uh, as color. Each frequency of light has a different color to it. One has blue, one has red, okay? And so light, which is, uh, you know, what's creating the picture in your mind, Mm -hmm. has no color, okay? So there's no color out there in the world. Now, I'm not telling you my theory. I'm telling you <clears throat> just high school physics, okay? But it's something that we, we, don't, we, we miss when we're taught this. Uh, it's sort of like we miss the implications of what we're being taught. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the rest. Of, there's three more senses, just yes. very briefly. Yes. When you taste... Like right now, you're drinking some water. If there was a little lemon juice in there, you would taste the sour taste. Well, there's actually no taste in the glass. There's no sourness in the water glass. Rather, what it is is there are particular molecules that have a particular configuration which stimulate your tongue, and certain molecules stimulate your tongue different ways. And your brain, again, goes up to your brain. Your brain interprets certain molecular configurations as sour, different ones as sweet. But there's no sweet or sour out there in the world. It's an interpretation of something. Mm -hmm. Well, what is an interpretation of those molecules? Well, molecules can really only be described mathematically. Again, you see the pattern. It's mm -hmm. happening every single time. The thing in itself that's supposed to be causing the experience can only be described mathematically. It can't be described in perceptual terms or the kind of terms that we imagine in. Mm -hmm. Okay, then um, with uh, smell, 
you have certain kind of molecules stimulates the, and you get different scents. You have the same thing. The actual scent isn't in the air. The scent is in your mind. Mm -hmm. The actual, uh, the, 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 the orange that you're smelling ha in itself, there's no scent in it. it. That is an interpretation of something. And then finally, um, there's the, let's say heat, hot and cold. Mm -hmm. If you remember, uh, I feel this table and it feels kind of warm from the studio lights. That's because the molecules are vibrating at a particular frequency. Mm -hmm. And that's shaking my, the nerve endings. That's going up my nervous system to my brain. And my brain is assigning to various frequencies a sense of warmth or a mm -hmm. sense of coldness. So there's no hot or cold in the world, right? It's an interpretation. Did you follow all that? Oh, yes. OK, so that's our five senses. OK. So what do we get from this? We get that everything that I experience through my five senses is occurring in me, mm -hmm. OK? So how do I imagine what is the world in itself if there was nobody there to ascension to experience it? Say, no, no, uh, there was only uh, rocks and minerals, and there were no, uh, there was nothing, uh, not even an insect, no amount, no sentience, all inorganic life. Mm -hmm. Say there was a planet and it was totally devoid of life. Let's say we're going back in evolution to a time prior to any biological life at all, where there's air and there's water and there's fire and there's there, there are planets and there are suns exploding but there's nothing alive. Well how do you imagine that world? Well we imagine it like we see it. Mm -hmm. We imagine it as hot but it's not hot. We imagine it as bright. A sun is exploding so we imagine that as very white uh, very or very blue but it's not. Mm -hmm. Those are all interpretations. So how is that world independent of its experience, of being experienced? How is that world? And materialism would say that that world is independent, but basically your mm -hmm. ph philosophical approach would say that it's in the perceiver. Okay, well, that, that's what is I want to get Is that correct? Well, yeah. What they would say is out there, what there is, is some matter. Mm -hmm. Okay? But then if you ask, well, what is this matter? Can you describe the matter? You say, well, I, we can't describe it in any kind of sentient kind of terms. But we can describe it mathematically. We can, we can say uh, we have these, we, 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 we have, uh, I can say how the, um, if, uh, if, the, if we're in a room, I could tell you the relation between the size of your chair to the size of the room, and it might be one one hundredth of the volume of the room or something like that. And I could say that describes the matter. But all that is is a mathematical description. Mm -hmm. Well, what is that a description of? It's supposed to be the matter. Well, the problem is that this idea doesn't explain our experience. Okay? Now, while I just described a story where we're getting all this uh, stimulation, okay, to our mind, okay. No one has ever been able to explain how at some point in all of this that I've just described, experience comes about. There's no mechanics for it, mm -hmm. okay. No one, uh, I, I mean, I can say, oh, well, this, uh, this electricity, it moves to my brain, and then I get color, and that's an interpretation. Well, how does that happen? How does, how does consciousness come about? How, 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 how is it made? Well, it's supposed to be reducible to matter. Okay, now I'm going to read the definition for matter because it'll, it'll help. The, uh, the definition for materialism. Materialism is the theory that physical matter is the only reality and that psychological states such as emotions, reason, thought, and desire and I have to add also all experience, color, sound, anything, my experience of you. All of that will eventually, and it's interesting, eventually be explained as physical functions. But so far, no one has ever been able to explain it as physical functions. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a it's, an, it's an axiom. It's something that's taken for granted that it must be this way. 
but no one has ever been able to even analyze what we're talking about when we talk about matter. Okay. And let alone explain how this matter causes something like experience. Okay. We're going to take a break right okay. now and come back. Okay. Uh, that's all very interesting. Okay. Uh, so we're going to take a break, yeah. go to a promo, and we'll be right back with Ozark Live uh, with Christopher Ott. Okay. Hey. I got a break tomorrow. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Al Vick, and I'm with the new Arkansas Independent Media Center. Let me see one of those flyers. Show it. Uh, actually, it's not so much a flyer as a sticker. You can put it on your refrigerator, put it on your, your windows. You can... Um, Sticker. Put it on your bumper. Just about anything you'd like to do with it, really. But most importantly, look us up. The URL is on the top there. We stand for independent journalism, and we're a worldwide network, and we are the local aspect of that for Arkansas. Um, hi, this is Maureen Mullen. Welcome back to Ozark Live. Uh, my guest is Christopher Ott, and he's talking about his theory of the evolution of uh, perception, which is a radical new idea, quite different than uh, the philosophy that's sort of holding sway at this point in time of materialism. So I wanted to ask you, Chris, tell me about your particular uh, approach and how it differs from materialism. Okay. Um, but let me first say why the other doesn't work. Okay. Great. Okay. That's Mater matter is supposed to be, if I was to tell you what matter is supposed to be, it's supposed to be the cause of your experience. Okay? So in order to explain my experience, I've postulated some kind of substance, some kind of stuff that's analogous to my experience. Do you know what I mean by analogous? To yes, I it? do. Okay. Absolutely. It's like something in my experience. Mm -hmm. Like I have an experience of of like putty and plastic and cement. So I kind of imagine something analogous to that mm -hmm. that's causing my experience of stuff like plastic, and, okay? Well, the problem is if you cre invent something to explain your experience, instead of explaining your experience, you have now two things to explain. Mm -hmm. You still have your experience to explain, yes. but now you have also matter to explain. So, whereas you started out with just one thing to explain, you wound up with two. And so you've actually moved farther away from any explanation. And you were also getting, uh, uh, even if you, you accomplished this, you're getting more complex. Mm -hmm. You're getting more entities, okay? Now, string theory goes, in order to uh, try to do this, adds to this dimensions, strings, uh, harmonics, uh, uh, all, all kinds of things. Very, very complex and it's becoming, gr the complexity is growing and growing and growing. And yet experience, the thing that w we, we're bombarded with all the time, is still unexplained. Mm -hmm. Now, in my, my idea is to take a, something that for some reason hasn't been noticed in philosophy. In the 1800s, science began to notice that, it's, that, that there's a new kind of theory. And that new kind of theory is called a process theory. A process is, is different than inventing something to explain something. Like um, long ago, we wondered, well, how did we get here? So we invented gods in Olympus, mm -hmm. and they made us. So we invented something analogous to ourselves to explain ourselves. Well, now we, we don't do it that way. We have the theory of evolution. Where we have things as they are, we look for processes that are going on, and we extrapolate that those processes created this world. Mm -hmm. um, you have that uh, in other areas also. You have it in plate tectonics, and you have it in the expanding universe and the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory is a process theory. Mm -hmm. There's not another universe that created this universe. It's that this universe evolved. Mm -hmm from a simpler state. So, but this for some reason has not been adopted in philosophy. It, it's sort of like um, 
even though it's, it's over 100 years old, 150 years old, that we've had process theory in science, philosophy is, is very rigidly in, it, mm. in its traditions of trying to come up with some kind of metaphysical substance. So I got an idea from a book called God Speaks by a, a man named Meher Baba that's been collecting dust on sh bookshelves and libraries hmm. since about 1955 and almost no one has ever read it okay it's a very difficult book but this person mayor baba came up with the idea that there has been an evolution of consciousness has created the world okay or evolution of experience okay so my idea is the evolution of perception and the cosmology of substance. How did this substance come about? Well, I say, like a naive realist, I go, this is the thing. This experience really is the book. Um, the, what we're seeing here is the real book. This experience is what's real. And how it, it came about is so complexly like it is. We, we have a very complex experience right now. Uh, you know. I could just go on and on and on about the complexity of, of my experience, um, evolved from simpler experience. So basically I'm just taking a, a modern scientific principle and applying it to philosophical metaphysics in order to explain experience. We don't need to come up with something besides experience to explain experience. Rather, experience is its own is its own explanation. Mm -hmm. So in this process mm -hmm. of the evolution of perception, yeah. what were the, I don't know if I should say steps, because I know you talk about how it's really not in time, because time is part of what our perception has created, yeah, correct? It's, it's so what would be the, what are mm -hmm. the pieces of it? Okay, there's an evolution of what I call uh, perceptual schemata. Now schema a schemata is plural for a schema. Mm -hmm. A schema is a way of organizing something. A, okay, And so a, a perceptual schema is something that I came up with. It's a way in which we organize experience. And these schemata evolved one after the other. And they sort of build like layers. And I use an analogy of lenses. Okay, mm -hmm. You have one lens, and you have another lens, and you have another lens. And those lenses start out very simple, and they begin to build up the complexity of our experience finally winding up with us as individuals, okay, uh, having separate experience from one another. But even that emerges out of these lenses, okay. And I, and basically, my book is 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 committed to trying to articulate the the order in which those ways of seeing uh, brought about various qualities in our experience. Now, w the first was um, the schema of distinction okay mm -hmm. and then I have the, dis the, 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 the next schema is the schema of time and then the schema of space and once you have the schema of distinction time and space you have mathematics is all automatically uh, entailed by mm -hmm. those three things because all math mathematics is is distinctions okay and so the, the, the world originally evolved mathematically Mm -hmm. and that uh, the natural laws, like the, the, the law of gravity, no one's ever actually found gravity, mm -hmm. but they have noticed that this falls at a certain rate per second per second, where there's ex acceleration has a, uh, you know, a peak acceleration and all this, and this can all be described mathematically. I say this is a law of perception. Mm -hmm. and the reason we can't find the gravity is because it's here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it, exp it actually is the first actual explanation, sort of ontological explanation for gravity. And later, you know, as uh, in evolution, we apply color and sound, et cetera, to that mathematical matrix that's evolved. And then uh, individuality arises, I have, and it's all in the book. Mm -hmm. And then uh, language, culture, and the human psyche. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you gave, yeah. you, you told me about one example oh. that you had given to your daughter. Mm -hmm. 
um, about a sheet with holes in it. Oh, okay. okay. Can you can you talk about that? I thought that was okay. really well. I had a said good analogy and sort of quite yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, this is going to this will be strike people as a diver, you know, diverging from what I'm talking about. What I was just um, we talked about God. Mm -hmm. We were talking about God. <clears throat> um, there's been basically two views um, in the past. There was the idea of monotheism, which was several thousand years old. It actually goes out before the Jews. Most people don't know. It goes back to Zoroaster, mm -hmm. uh, before the Jews. And uh, monotheism is the belief that there is one God out there, and that we're the Earth, and there's God. It's sort of a duality. And then we evolved this materialism, and we kind of have a mix now of monotheism and materialism, but materialism is very similar. It's that there's some kind of matter out there mm. that we can't see directly, that we have some subjective interpretation of. So we've created another thing, okay? And the new idea is that there's no other, that there, it's all one, it's all one. And that instead of, you know, the, the part of the definition of God is that God is a person. That's what monotheism is. Well, this idea is that God is the person. And so I gave the analogy of uh, you, you, um, you take a piece of paper and you cut out a bunch of holes in it and you hold it up and you look through all those holes. Well, in, in the way I imagine it, and, I, and I'm always willing to be absolutely wrong, uh -huh. uh, is that God is the one looking through all of us. Uh -huh. And we're okay. all those little holes. In a and sense. we're all those little holes. We're yes. all those little lenses. Yes. I know you say something mm -hmm. too, or maybe someone said it, mm -hmm. and I think you referred to it, of, of the universe and, and God getting lost in it. Tell me a well, little bit okay, more that, about that the, hole. That's, that or is, the world. is stolen that from uh, Mayor Bob, and that's not that's in the I, book. By the way, in this book I never mentioned God. I just want to say that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I did want to give God a, a plug. Because yeah. I like God, we, 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 me and him are good friends. Yeah. And uh, and Mayor Baba has, in his book, w basically is saying that what evolved is God. Okay. What God, be prior to all this, there was no subject or object. Mm -hmm. There's no seer or there's an, or seeing. Mm -hmm. Rather, there's just seeing itself. Let's say. There's just percept, or let's say there's just consciousness. Well, if there's just consciousness, just the activity of, yeah. of, of, uh, of perceiving, but then, and no one to do the seeing and nothing to see, how would this have any awareness of itself? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't. So God essentially imagines up and creates an entire universe, becomes lost in that universe, identifies w with uh, us lost so it is it so I who am lost am oh. God lost oh, trying to find myself and at the end of this journey that we're all like in a little like in a little line you know coming from the infinite but unconscious through all this illusion yes to find our way back to the infinite conscious mm-hmm so it's sort of like the whole universe is this big consciousness factory. Mm -hmm. And um, so the object of life, the meaning of life, which isn't in my book. I don't talk about the meaning of life. That's pretty bold. Mm -hmm. But Mayor Baba says that the meaning of life, the purpose of life, mm -hmm. is God's finding himself. Mm -hmm. Interesting. OK. Um, well, we're going to wrap up right now. Great. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us. me. It's been great having yeah. you here. I probably, I think I'd like to have you back another time, actually. That'd be great. So we can discuss all of this uh, further because it's, it's quite interesting. Good. So thank you very much. So thank you very much for watching Ozark Live. Um, I'm Maureen Mullen. Um, I do want to thank my crew. Uh, there has been uh,